Hey guys, Future Bottle Top Hornet here. Just popping in to let you guys know that I originally had planned this to... I looked straight at the Enderman, didn't I? <laughs> I originally planned to have this uh, be part of the main Let's Play series, but I've decided to split it up into two episodes. This one's going to focus on the smaller, sort of adding details to small parts of your builds, and the video after this is going to focus on bigger builds and planning out buildings and also how I come up with ideas on what to build and where. So with that being said, back to the main video. Hope you guys enjoy and I'll catch you later. Hey everyone, my name is Bottle Top Hornet and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. Starting this episode off a little different because for this episode, what I want to do is do my best to show you guys my tips or my ways that I like to add detail to my builds. Now, <laughs> I don't personally think I have an incredible build style, but a lot of you in the comments have said that you enjoy the way that I build things. So I want to do my best to show you some of the ways that I go about thinking through the process of building something and, and what my brain does when I'm deciding to add more detail or or looking at a space and, and working out what I want to build there. So as you can see in this time lapse, I'm doing my best to gather a bunch of materials. This took about two hours. <laughs> two hours of gathering wood, it was ridiculous. But I wanted to have all the resources that I needed to be able to build whatever I needed to on the island and not have to go back and, and find some more materials elsewhere. So with that being said, in a second, we're going to pop in and I've written down a little list of a couple of things that I want to try and spruce up and fix up on my island that just haven't had details added to them or I haven't finished them since I started them in another episode. And we'll see if we can have some uh, half decent tips in this video for you guys and hopefully you enjoy it. So let's pop into the island and see what we can come up with. So welcome back in. Now, <laughs> I definitely gathered a decent supply of the two... Uh, easier ones to grab a lot of and I think yeah a little bit of jungle as well I just tried my best to grab a little bit of the other types so that I had some available and I'm pretty sure from when I dug out the uh, the large area below yeah I've still got heaps of stone left so that's not a problem either and so in just a second we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna do my best to keep all of this as succinct as possible. I want to make sure that it's quick and easy to follow. So I'm not going to waste too much time this episode chatting away. I'm just going to jump into it. There's just one thing I need to do first. Perfect. Okay, so let's get ourselves situated and we'll jump into the first build. And I think what I'm going to do is finally fix up this little hallway that goes through the center of the island. And the first thing I'm going to say is there is no secret formula. There is no trick that I know of that will instantly make you a better builder. The way that I've done it is just by watching other people. And if I can be <laughs> some of that inspiration for you guys, that's great. But I know that I like to call it sort of like Frankensteining. I take little pieces from all these different YouTubers or people that I've seen or even just screenshots of the game and I take little parts of that and go, oh, I like how that looks, or I like how this looks. And over time, I've developed some things that I just generally like to do. And you can too, like you will start to develop a way that you like to build things. And it's always changing. It's always going to be growing and improving or even completely doing a 180 and changing. You might find that you don't like something you built in the past. And when it comes to things like this, I've just learned that there is no structure to a lot of things that people build. When, when people see stuff that they think looks dynamic and interesting, it's usually because it's done very randomly. Like these cliffs were thrown together as randomly as possible, but in my opinion, they came out looking interesting. There's something different about them, the number nine for some reason. <laughs> but you get what I mean, hopefully, is that I don't go, hmm, I definitely need to put a particular type of slab there. I just start throwing them together. So I'm going to do that for starters here. I'm going to bring this, continue this sort of uh, flooring concreted area right up to this point here, and then we'll build ourselves a little hallway. And like I said, I, I truly think the easiest way to do it is to just randomly spam pieces down. There, there doesn't need to be a, a pattern to it or anything like that. 
This is just my way of doing it. And everything in this video is just going to be how I generally, not like that, <laughs> but how I generally chuck together my builds. So I'll go, okay, there's that there. I don't want to put too many of the bricks because I think it's a little bit more structured looking. So there's a couple of these spread around throughout here, like so. It's getting dark, but we'll see if we can get a couple more in from there. The easiest one to add a lot of is this, uh, these half stone slabs, because it's less likely to draw your eye, but it fills in a lot of the space. So if I just throw a bunch of these around like so, it takes up a lot of the, uh, the blank area and it removes the need to really add as many of the detailing blocks, in my opinion. So if I just spam these through here like so, get a bunch of these ones in, and they're the ones that can fill up the gaps a little easier, take up some of that space like this. I'm going to quickly sleep <laughs> and then we'll finish it up with a little bit of andesite. I might not, I might have to add a couple more pieces of some other block types, but we'll just fill in, start to fill in some of these gaps like so. And we'll see what it looks like. There you go. Like pretty much. <laughs> Maybe if I just go like this, do I have any of the other types? I might get a couple more of the plain stone because that's the easiest to just throw in anywhere and there you go now we have like there are places where it's it's a little bit much stone there but in reality when you're walking through the whole thing your eye takes in the whole picture rather than the individual individual blocks so it doesn't really matter like you might look at it and go oh there's a big like vein of andesite there but I would never notice that as I'm running through and from a distance, everything blends together into a pattern of its own and it, it doesn't have to be even. <laughs> and so now let's let's create a, a basic hallway to show you what it would look like if I didn't add any detail. <laughs> okay, so this might be fine. It's possibly a little bit short for some people's taste. They might like it three blocks high. But it is two and a half because I've got slabs down on the ground so nothing can technically spawn in here. Now, you know, if you were just doing a standard hallway, you could always just add some torches down the side like so and then go on your merry way. Probably put them evenly if you want to, like something like that. It's not quite right, but you get the idea. And that would be fine. Like this is a functional hallway. Like I said, there is nothing wrong with this. There's no wrong way to play Minecraft. But what I might want to do is add a little bit of detail. So since we've got a little bit of space and we can always add more dirt on top, what I'm going to do is take out the middle four of this. We can keep these side ones and see whether or not it looks okay with a little bit of extra chunky structure on the side. But if I take this out like this, and then what I do is I take some of these half slabs and I want to show off this one as if you're using a very limited block palette. So you don't have a lot of different block types yet. You might be early game, but it might be easy enough for you to just get a little bit of stone and a little bit of a certain wood type to create a, an area. So just like this, you're starting to see a little bit more shape come into the overall structure. Now, in reality, all we're doing here is raising these two center blocks by one and then using the half slabs to sort of bridge the space between i'm a massive like advocate for adding as many different planes of structure as possible so adding as many obviously that looks a little strange right now but if i just do that that's better <laughs> and i i think the more angles the more faces that you have showing in a structure the better it's going to look so just like that we've made it look less cramped by raising just these two middle blocks by one and then replacing that with a half slab. And it gives us a little bit of that archway. Now, the next thing we might want to do is break up this, this flooring a little bit. It looks a little bit plain. So <laughs> it's getting dark again, but what I'll do is I'll do it down one side. I'm going to add the details on one side so you can see the difference from one side to this plain side. So all I would do is just down this side, something like that. See how it adds just a little bit of almost like a kicker board that you have in your home? It's just a, another variance in the faces that you see. So it changes that up again. You're starting to get more faces, more detail, more structure in there. So now this is where things start to get a little bit different. 
because what I want to do is start adding some symmetry, or at least this is how I like to do it. So what I will do is count the length of this wall. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Perfect. That means that we can, since it's an odd number, we can find a center. So half of 19 is nine and a half, which means that the middle block is going to be one and we'll have nine on either side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So that's the middle block. All I'm going to do is much the same process as what I did here, but just adding a bit of depth. I'm going to go from the center and I'm going to open up, say five blocks. Mm, looking at the length of it, it's not quite large enough a section for me personally, so I'll do seven. That way we have like a nice broken up section that breaks it into a bit of a, a third, almost. Now, the simplest thing to do, for starters, is much the same way that we added a little bit extra up the top there by just putting some more bricks down the back. We'll do the same thing here. We'll add some bricks one step back and fill in the space. Now. That doesn't look like much, it just looks like an opening. But this is where we can start to add more faces. And you gotta keep in mind, there are a lot of different shapes. Even though this is a game mostly made out of cubes, there are a lot of different shapes that you can use. One of those being these fences or these brick, uh, yeah, walls. Now by just adding those in the corner, they join up really nicely, they match the texture because they're technically stone brick walls, just the same as these are stone bricks but you can see how it adds that extra layer. And even these very, very small little faces that just add that pop of detail. So now we're starting to get a little bit of detail on the sidewall. We've got a little bit of detail on the roof as well. The next thing I wanna do is try and break up these flat faces without having to dig in to the wall much like we have in the center here. And one way I like to do that is with Stairs. So one of the great things about stairs is their ability to be placed in many different ways. So for example, I could do something like this and we create a, a slightly off put, same size square as a standard block, but it's actually halfway through the center of two blocks. So it adds a little bit of detail or to the same idea, I could do something like this. And now all I would have to do is grab another set of bricks like that, and we have some more detail like that. Now, you don't have to add two. You can even do something as simple as creating tiny little alcoves like that. And say I wanted to do an even smaller one, I could then put one sideways like this. Again, all I have to do is chuck a brick in the back, and we're adding something different. It's, again, like I said, more faces, more spots for the lighting engine in this game to create different colors because technically this is all they're all the same color all these blocks are the same but when you look at this section in there it looks darker in the shadow it looks darker against that edge there than it does where the light's hitting it and that creates again just more depth more character to the wall and if you stand here looking at either side even though i don't necessarily want to leave it like that you get the idea there's nothing wrong with that. It looks fine. And in some cases, I actually prefer a, a flatter wall that doesn't actually draw your attention that much. But when you want to add detail, using very simple little tricks of stairs or walls like this will make a huge difference. So I'm going to fiddle for a second. I'll see whether I can come up, a, uh, come up with a design of some alcoves and little ways that this will be detailed up. And then I'll show you what I've come up with. And... After just a little bit of time, here we go. So you can see all it takes is a little bit of color, a little bit of uh, detail as far as finding different planes and trying some different things. You see, I've got one option here, which has like a window showing off this lighting source and a uh, the shorter walls in the middle here to create that depth. Or there's the option over here of almost like a fireplace style thing. Now, personally, I think I prefer that, but this is one of those things that you'll run past this a million times and over time you'll go, huh, I think I might change that. And that's a theme that I want to have throughout this video. Don't be afraid to change things. Changing up and noticing the flaws or the things that you would like to do different in your builds is exactly what you should be doing if you want to try and get better. Because thinking that you are good at what you do 
is fine and you can be happy with the builds that you make. Like there's nothing wrong with this one here, but being able to go, hmm, I could probably do something better. I don't know what it is yet, but maybe one day as I'm running past, I'm going to notice something and I'm going to be hit with a spark of creativity and I'm going to change something and realize that it looks even better. So that like I've just thrown this together just very quickly, just to try and show off how adding different planes by using different block types will help you gain a little bit more detail. So I think I'm going to change that other one to look like that. There we go. And then I will mimic it on the other side and we'll see what it looks like when the whole hallway is done up like this. And there we go. I mean, personally, I would probably add a little bit more detail in the top of some different wood types or maybe even a, uh, a beam of, uh, of timber, but I want to keep things simple and sort of, <laughs> like I said earlier, use this as though just some materials that you would be able to gather fairly quickly on. Maybe not the leaves, although no, you could actually just some shears and stuff. So it's not that hard to get all these materials. The last thing that I would probably do is just when it comes to these more detailed or more feature wall style is I can rotate those back in like so and just open the uh, the hallway up a little bit again. And just like that, I think that's in line. Yeah, so just like that, we create, again, another layer, another shift in planes that creates more and more depth. And I think just like that, as we walk through, we have a half decent looking hallway. Now, obviously you start to go into more depth and have to come up with stuff on the outside, but for the sake of brevity, <laughs> We're going to move on to the next thing. And in the theme of not being afraid to change things and come up with better ideas in the future after looking at something for a long time, this bridge, it's got to go. Something that I was striving for when creating these cliffs is making it look semi-natural, as though if this was the real world, something like that could happen. A small overhang, a layer of dirt on the top like that, the way that the trees are sitting on top and everything. It's possible. Whereas looking at this bridge, it doesn't look like it fits in with that, that realism. It looks too thin. It looks like it couldn't support its own weight and it stands out to me. And so for me, I start to take the time and think, what is it about the build that throws me off? What is it that makes me feel like it needs improving? And like I say, it's the thinness. It's the fact that it doesn't look structurally like it should be able to just be hanging there like that. Now, Minecraft, you can do whatever you want. If you want to have something hanging against physics, that's fine. And in a lot of cases, it can look very good. But I feel like, personally, for this area just here, I want something that's a little bit more grounded in reality. So what we're going to do is we're going to thicken this one up. We're going to add a little bit more of a substantial structure underneath and support it and change up the look of this whole thing just a little bit while trying to maintain that step up from this block height here down a couple of blocks over onto that one there. And for this, it's much easier to do it in the form of a time lapse. So as you can see, I'm adding some slightly thicker supports coming up out of the water. The next thing that I wanted to do was try my best to add some structure from those supports. So you can see I'm trying to curve with some walls, but I end up actually changing this to slabs instead because the walls weren't providing that depth and that, that feeling of solidarity for the bridge. And then adding some blackstone to the outsides, trying to frame it as best I could. And you'll see that I start to change it a little bit as I go, realizing that the blackstone needs to be thicker and then changing the tops of the supports so that they are also blackstone. Adding a couple of lights on top, using the hoppers to create that gradient, those different layers, those different planes, like I said, until we come up with something that sort of looks a little bit more substantial. And then of course, using leaves to hide all the imperfections. And it means we end up with something looking a little bit more substantial. Now, <laughs> I already am going, I'm not sure whether it's perfect. I'm not sure whether it's exactly what I wanted. But at the same time, I know that there's more things to be added in the future. So for now, it's good enough. It looks more substantial coming across the islands. It looks thicker and more like it can carry its own weight because of these slightly sweeping, curving sections that go down to these main supports. And then, like I said at the end, using this uh, 
<laughs> these leaves to just hide the imperfections to to break it up so that you don't necessarily <laughs> so you don't necessarily look at all of it as uh, you don't see the bottom so much as you see the whole structure as one. It grounds it in reality a little bit more, brings in the color of the surround so it doesn't stand out as much, and we gain a little bit of extra detail. And if I pop up here, doing stuff like this, where you have a hopper to create those different planes, those different uh, angles, and it matches the exact same thickness of a, of a fence, it's just another way to give some depth, give some detail, and change up the look of it a little bit. And now we have some light, so at night time, when the sun goes down, this is going to look a little bit more impressive. There may be some blocks on here that are definitely spawnable, but for now, it's it's doing the trick. And as we add more detail around the sides, potentially more blackstone to tie this structure into the, the side of the island, like, like that bit there, I might want to add some blackstone here, and that'll further implant this into blending in with the, the existing structures and the existing other parts of the island. And personally, from a distance, I think it looks like it belongs a lot more than the old bridge. It looks far less standouty, if that makes sense. It looks, <laughs> it doesn't catch the eye as much because it isn't as thin. It looks like it's more substantial, like all of these cliff faces around it. So I, I'm going to count that one as a win. Now, unfortunately, because I do tend to ramble, as much as I've tried to uh, edit this up and clip the the talking as much as possible so that I get all the information in. This episode is going to run long if I continue and show off all of the tips and tricks that I want to or that I had planned. So I'm going to split this one into a two-parter. I'm going to have these two sort of larger projects included and then I think in the next episode I'm going to do some bigger work in time lapses and much like I did with this bridge I'm going to explain my process over top of them and we're going to do a little bit more work of adding boardwalks around, tying in structures and talking about how adding walkways and tying together all of the parts of your island even if you have elytra available to you you want to be able to structure your builds and your walkways so that even if someone comes in with no materials no equipment or anything freshly spawned into the world they should be able to access every single part of your base without having to fly or fall or anything so it's we're going to talk about structuring it so that we have walkways, staircases, ramps, and everything in between designed to help a player move around the island in a coherent way, in a way that makes sense, in a way that anyone could understand and slowly discover different parts of your build. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed these tips so far. I don't know whether they're necessarily what you had in mind or whether they're even as good as you had hoped, but hopefully you take away something from this, even if it's the smallest details, even if it's the littlest piece of inspiration, even if it's one small part of what I've done, you decide to implement into your own, then I'm already happy with what I've put out. But we'll come back for the second part of these tips and tricks. I'll try and edit up the video and get it out a little bit quicker than I usually do, so there won't be as much time in between the episodes. And we'll move on to those other things I was talking about and see if we can come up with some more good ideas. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be down in the comments chatting with you guys if you have any ideas or if there's anything that you'd like to talk about that I've shown off in this episode. Feel free to ask me any questions. And until the next one, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>